Okay, so what we did today is some enrichment on electrochemistry. Specifically, we were doing the thermodynamic aspects of electrochemistry. So these are the problems that we did today. Uh, this file is available on the course website. You can also just uh, pause the recording and then try these problems for yourself and then resume when you're ready. So here are problems one and two. And then here are problems three and four. There are only four problems in this uh, enrichment set. So again, you can download this file from the course website, or you could just pause the recording and then hit resume when you're ready to see the answers. So now we're going to go over all the answers so that everybody knows how to do these problems. So question one has multiple parts. So let's go through it. So first of all, we're given a net ionic equation. We're asked to balance the reaction. Now that's obviously not a new skill. We've been doing balancing redox reactions for a while now. But it's an important step in the process, right? Because you can't do any of the thermodynamic calculations until you have a balanced cell reaction. So, to balance this reaction, we need to go through and assign our oxidation numbers. So this is plus 3, 0, plus 2, and plus 2. All right, monatomic ion, pure element, monatomic, monatomic. So, we ask ourselves, okay, what's the cathode reaction, what's the anode reaction? My anode reaction is the reduction, right, red cat. So that's Cu, excuse me, that's my oxidation reaction. Red cat would be the cathode. So my anode reaction is my oxidation. So that's Cu going to Cu2 plus plus 2E minus. My cathode reaction is my reduction. So that's Fe3 plus plus E minus becoming Fe. 2 plus, and now I want to get my electrons to cancel out, right? So I multiply this whole thing by 2, and then when I add them up, my balanced equation would be 2 Fe3 plus plus Cu, producing 2 Fe2 plus plus Cu2 plus. And let's go ahead and do part B while we're at it. So to get E cell, we need to use our standard reduction potentials. All right, so looking at my chart, standard reduction potentials. E for this one is 0.34 volts. And E for this one, 0 0.77 volts. Now just remember, we multiply this cathode reaction by two, but we do not do that to the E value, right? Because this is not like what we did with Hess's law in Chem 1. So E cell, get that cursor out of the way. E cell is calculated. And remember, this is under standard conditions. That's what that degree sign means is the cathode minus the anode. So cathode is 0.77 and anode is 0.34. So that gives me 0 0.43. My unit is volts. So there's E cell. And now that I know E cell, I can calculate the electrochemical work how many electrons are transferred in this reaction? It would be two, right? Because that's the number that I canceled out here. So number of electrons is two, and then we just calculated E cell. So now we can calculate our electrochemical work. Move that up just a touch. Where did my eraser go? There it is. 
All right, so let's calculate work. So work is negative Q E cell. Now don't let that confuse you, right? We did see lowercase q last semester in Kim 1, but that is not heat, okay? So Q that we're talking about here is number of moles electrons times Faraday's constant. That's what we're talking about there. So this would be negative two, because there are two moles of electrons, times Faraday's constant, which will be given on your next exam reference page, nine, six, four, eight, five coulombs per mole electron. And then E cell, we just calculated in the previous problem, to be 0.43 volts. One volt is the same thing as one joule per coulomb. That's how coulombs cancel. I'm left with units of joules. So that gives me negative 83,000 joules, which is the same thing as negative 83 kilojoules. So I would have accepted either one. So that's work. Okay. For part D, we're asked, is this a galvanic slash voltaic cell or is it an electrolytic cell? How do I know? So there is a very easy way to tell which one it is. Galvanic slash voltaic cells, these are your spontaneous reactions. Whereas your electrolytic cells are your non-spontaneous. Right? So we just have to go back and look at our value of E cell. We had a positive E cell. Right? E cell is positive, therefore this is a spontaneous cell reaction. So therefore this is a galvanic cell, which is the same thing as voltaic. Okay? If we had had a negative E cell, then that would have been an electrolytic cell, because those are non-spontaneous. All right, so now that we've identified the type of the cell, we can move on to parts E and F that ask us to identify the parts that occur at the cathode and the anode. We actually have already done that. Right? We've figured that out already in part A. So cathode is the reduction. And anode is the oxidation. So the cathode, that's the reduction, red cat. And anode is the oxidation. All right, this is what generates electrons, and this is what uses electrons. All right, so what's my reduction? My cathode would be the reduction. All right, so that's my 2Fe3 plus plus 2E minus produces 2Fe2 plus. All right, and my anode the oxidation is my Cu becoming Cu2 plus plus 2E minus. Okay, so that's essentially what we did in part A. We're just restating it, asking you the same thing a couple different ways. It's always a good skill to be able to test you. Can you answer the same question when asked multiple ways? And then the last one, it's kind of the bloodbath of most exams. So let's really talk about this one. If I said, okay, sketch the cell, label all your important parts. A lot of times on tests, boy, this one just blows people out of the water. And I do have a short video on how to draw electrochemical cells if you need help on that. So first we wanna begin with our two beakers. 
right? And you could draw them attached to each other. I just always draw the salt bridge because that's what we use in lab. But you could have drawn them attached by a porous disc too. Okay, so let's go ahead and label the salt bridge. And what does it do? This is for ion transfer, right? Charge transfer. Okay, electrons sp flow spontaneously from anode to cathode. So that means we need to have a metal in both of these. We've already established that this is an, uh, not an electrolytic, it's a galvanic cell. All right, so we've got our metals, we've got our wire, and then here's our light bulb or our voltmeter, or whatever we're using. Okay, and so now let's draw the electrons, right? Electrons transfer, they flow spontaneously anode to cathode. So electrons are going this way. So this is the wire. And this is for electron transfer from anode to cathode, right? And it goes this direction. This is an, not an electrolytic cell, it's a galvanic cell. So it's spontaneously going this direction. Now we also need to identify what's happening in the reaction. So what was my anode reaction? What's going on in here? We've got Cu solid becoming Cu2 plus plus 2 E minus. And these electrons, they travel through the wire. Okay, and then at the cathode, what's happening in the cathode? We've got two Fe3 plus, plus those two electrons becoming two Fe2 plus. And these electrons, where they come from? They came through the wire. So if I ask you to sketch an electrochemical cell, and this is galvanic, right? We've already established that. If I asked you to sketch a cell, these are all the pieces that I would be looking for as part of your drawing, okay? So, that's all for number one. Let's now take a look at number two. All right. A cell operates on this net ionic equation. We want to know delta G, and we want to know if it is spontaneous. So, first thing we need to do is we need to calculate E cell. All right, that's something we're going to need because delta G has the formula. Delta G is negative N F E cell, right? So that means we have to know E cell before we can do any delta G calculations. Let me pause the recording here for just a second. All right, let's continue going over this problem. So before we can calculate delta G, we have to know E cell, right? We can't calculate delta G until we know cell potential, and again, this is under standard conditions. That's what the degree sign stands for. So we're not at any temperature other than 25 degrees Celsius, and our molarities are all one mole per liter. Okay, so if this is our net ionic equation, we need to figure out what's occurring at the cathode, what's occurring at the anode. So the cathode reaction is, let's go ahead and assign our oxidation numbers, plus two, zero, zero, plus two. All right, so our cathode reaction is Cu2 plus 
plus uh, 2e minus, yes. Because I'm going from here to here. And e for the cathode is 0 0.34 volts. And then at the anode, that is the Fe going to Fe2 plus plus 2e minus. So the anode is negative 0 0.44. Volts. And again, these values are just from my standard reduction table. All right. So, E cell is E cathode minus E anode. So that would be 0 0.34 minus negative 0 0.44. So it gives me 0 0.78 volts. All right. So that's what's going to go in right here, 0 0.78 joules per coulomb. Faraday's constant is 96485 uh, coulombs per mole electron. And the only other piece I need now is number of electrons transferred, which is 2. Okay, so now I've got everything I need to calculate delta G. So delta G is negative N F E cell. So that's negative two, nine, six, four, eight, five. Oh, forgot my units. Let's put my units. Two moles of electrons times nine, six, four, eight, five coulombs per mole electron times 0 0.78. Remember, a volt is the same thing as a joule per coulomb. So coulombs cancel, moles, electrons cancel. That's how I get my unit in joules. And so I got negative 1.5 times 10 to the fifth joules, or if you put that in kilojoules, that would be negative 150 kilojoules. So that's delta G and then determine if it's occurring spontaneously. So all we need to do now is interpret delta G. Right? A negative delta G is spontaneous cell reaction. So yes, this is a spontaneous reaction. This would correspond to a galvanic cell. If it has a spontaneous reaction, you can say it's galvanic. So that's how we work number two. All right, number three's got multiple parts. So let's look at number Give myself some space here to balance this. All right, so we've been balancing redox reactions for a while now. So hopefully this is no longer challenging. It's something we can do pretty quickly. Let's go through and balance this. This is zero, this is minus two, and this is five. This is plus two, and this is minus one. All right, so oxygen is not participating in the redox, so we're doing zero to plus two and plus five to minus one. And I'm told that this is occurring in acidic solution, that's important. So let's look at the oxidation. All right, the oxidation is Zn going to Zn2 plus, plus 2e minus, right? Nothing to do here, no coefficients to deal with, nothing, nothing special. All right, for the reduction, we've got chlorine and chlorate becoming chloride. So we've got C2 
ClO3 minus, now this is going from plus five to minus one, so that's a gain of six electrons. But now we have to deal with the fact that we've got oxygen in the picture, right? So let's balance our H2Os. We need three oxygens over here. So we have three H2O, and then we need to balance hydrogens, so we need six H+. So now we've got a balanced reduction half reaction. And so to get these two to cancel, we want to multiply this one by three so that my electrons cancel. So my final balanced equation would be 3Zn plus 6H plus ClO3 minus produces 3Zn2 plus plus Cl minus plus 3H2O. So there's my balanced cell reaction. All right. B and C ask me to identify the processes that occur at the cathode and the anode. So let's just go ahead and do that. I don't have to rewrite everything. The process that occurs at the cathode is the reduction. So which one of these is the reduction? That's this one. Right, so this one is occurring at the cathode. And then what's occurring at the anode? That's oxidation. So this is my anode reaction. Remember, the anode is producing the electrons that are consumed at the cathode. So that one saved us a little bit of writing. Let's now look at which substance is consumed in the reaction. Let's just look at our equation again. I think that'll help us figure it out. Oops, wrong direction. Looking at our equation tells us the answer to this. What's getting consumed? Well, zinc is. Whatever is at the anode is getting consumed, right? Zn solid is consumed. So your solid piece of zinc becomes zinc 2 ion. So that's what's getting consumed. And then which electrode is positive? Well, just like a cation is positive, a cathode. Cathode is always positive. Right? Just like a cation is positive, the cathode is always positive as well. And so that's how we work number three. All right, last question, I mean, last problem to deal with. And it's kind of a long one, so bear with me. Cell uses this reaction in acidic solution, and the concentrations are given. All right, so first thing you need to think, anytime you see me give you a whole bunch of concentrations, your first thought is non-standard conditions. Right, and then this is not a standard temperature either. So that also would lead into my non-standard conditions conclusion. We're gonna need to use the Nernst equation. Okay, because standard conditions would be all concentrations of one molar and 25 degrees Celsius. These are clearly not one molar. This is not 25 degrees Celsius. So anytime you see temperature other than 25, 
or molarities other than one, that's non-standard conditions, which means you've got to use the nearest equation. Okay? So, interpreting the question is a big part of this, right? First thing we need to do is we need to balance the reaction, and that'll give us to get number of moles, electrons, and it'll also give us E cell. Remember, E cell with a degree sign is under standard conditions. That's part of the Nernst equation. All right, so we have to calculate E cell under standard conditions in order to plug it into the Nernst equation to figure out what it would be under non-standard conditions. So let's go through and assign our oxidation numbers. This is plus six, this is minus one, this is plus three, and this is zero. Oxygens are not participating in the redox. All right, so let's balance the chromium half reaction first. So Cr2O7 two minus, going from plus six to plus three is a gain of three electrons. However, there are two chromiums here, so I need a coefficient of two here. And if one chromium gains three, then two chromiums would gain six. And now we have to balance the oxygens. So we'd say plus seven H2O. Now we need to balance the hydrogens, so that would be the 14 H plus. All right. Now for here, we're going from minus one to zero. So I minus going to I two plus uh, electron, right? But what's wrong here? There's a subscript of two, so I need a coefficient of two. If one iodine loses one electron, then two iodines are gonna lose two electrons. Okay? So now what we need to do is we've got to get our electrons to cancel. So I'm gonna multiply this whole thing by three. And so I get my final balanced reaction, which will be 14H plus plus Cr2O72 minus plus three times two is six I minus produces three I2 plus two Cr3 plus plus seven H2O. All right, that's my balanced reaction. I'm gonna need this because this is the reaction that I'm gonna base my Nernst equation calculations off of. Okay, Nernst equation is gonna use, uh, have to calculate Q, which will go into my Nernst equation. All right, so let's list our information. We now found number of moles of electrons, that is six, right, because that's what canceled out here. And let's calculate E cell under standard conditions. So this one, uh, let's see, is 1.33 volts, and this one is 0.54 volts. Okay, and now I need to ask myself, what's the cathode, what's the anode? This one's the cathode, right? And this is the anode. And I know it's the cathode because this is my reduction, this is my oxidation. So that means E cell is cathode minus anode, which I got 0 0.79 volts. Okay, that's all information that's gonna be fed into the Nernst equation eventually. So the last thing we need to do before we can plug into the Nernst equation is we have to calculate Q. And so we're using the balanced equation here and we're using these molarities that I was given. So Q, 
Remember, it's products over reactants. Now, I2 is not going to participate. It's a solid. Chromium will participate. Water will not. It's a liquid. This is aqueous. This is aqueous. And this is aqueous. So I can ignore the I2 and I can ignore the water because they don't participate. So it will just be CR3 plus concentration. Now there's a coefficient of 2, so that means squared. Divided by concentration of H plus to the 14th times concentration of dichromate <coughs> times concentration of iodine, iodide, excuse me, to the 6th. So now I'm just going to plug in these values into here. So CR3 plus is 1 times 10 to the negative 5th. And I'm squaring it divided by H plus is 1 to the 14th. So that's just 1. This is 2. And then this is 1 to the 6th. So that gives me a value of 5.0 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, so now I've got everything I need to plug into the Nernst equation, so I just calculated Q. So now we can plug into Q. I mean, now we can plug into the Nernst equation and get our final answer. Temperature 42 degrees Celsius, which would be 315 Kelvin. So now I can plug into my E cell calculation under non standard conditions. Right? That has no degree sign because this is non standard. Minus RT over NF times the natural log of Q. So now I'm just plugging all these values in here, and I'm done. All right, so under standard conditions, my cell potential is 0.79, R, 8.314, temperature, 315, N is 6, Faraday's constant is 96485, and then natural log of Q. 5.0 times 10 to the negative 11 to take the log of that. So that gives me 0 0.79 minus this times this gives me 2618.9. This times this gives me 578910. The natural log of this gives me negative 23.72. So this is 0 0.79 minus negative 0 0.11. So that comes out to be 0 0.90 volts. So this is what the cell potential would have been if we were under standard conditions, one molar, 25 degrees Celsius. Making these modifications to the concentration and the temperature actually increase the cell potential to 0.9 volts. So calculating non-standard conditions, it is more steps, but that's just part of it. <laughs> so if you have any questions on how to do any of these problems, please feel free to email me or come see me in my office. Um, and I hope that this helps you in your electrochem studies.